welcome my brothers and sisters. Here we are with one more formation for the consecration to Jesus through Mary. So let's start our prayer before we uh, talk about this formation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We consecrate this moment, this meditations to the heart of the Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So continuing our formation, we will talk today about uh, for motives which recommend this devotion. By it, we give ourselves completely to God. The first motive shows us the excellence of the consecration of ourselves to Jesus through Mary. We can conceive of no higher calling than that of being the service of God, and we believe that the least of God's servants is richer, stronger, and nobler than any earthly monarch who does not serve God. So how precious is uh, when we, we give ourselves to God, when we serve our Lord with our heart, with our lives. And for example, we see that uh, money is not the most uh, precious thing that we can have. We can see that uh, the things that I possess, we can see even that my family is not the most precious thing that I can have. And God uh, himself, is enough for us. If I have God, I have everything that I need. My faith in God uh, is the most precious thing that I have. It's my treasure. I can lose everything in life. I can lose my, my father, my mother. I can lose money. I can lose my house. But if I do not lose my faith, I can say that I am still rich. If I'm friend of God, I can say that I am rich. And this is important uh, for us to meditate on this consecration because this is the purpose of us. Uh, we need to consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary in order to be this uh, faithful servant as she was, as she is a faithful servant of the Lord. And also this consecration helps us to imitate Christ. As we uh, read uh, before in the, the other video, that Christ shall be the ultimate end of all the devo all other devotion. So the same with us. If we get to consecrate ourselves to Mary, to Jesus, we need to try to imitate Christ in our actions, in our thoughts. There is a song that says, I want to love as Jesus loved. I want to smile as Jesus smiled. So this is the purpose of this consecration. It will help us to imitate Christ and who is the best person who is the best example for us of course the Virgin Mary she's the most perfect creature and she is the most perfect example for us I want to imitate Christ so uh, what ca what can I do I, I try to imitate to look at the Virgin Mary and to learn from her how to do the will of God as she says in Cana do whatever he tells you so I look to, ver to the Virgin Mary and I see Jesus in her, as also I said in the other formation. And she will help me to do, to imitate Christ. And I'll read here. Thus Christ did not come into the world independently of others in the flower of his manhood. But he came as a frail little child dependent on the care and attention of his mother. Consumed with the desire to give glory to God the Father and save the human race, he saw no better or shorter way to do so than by submitting completely to Mary. So if we submit ourselves to Mary, of course we will learn, we will learn how to do the will of God. We will learn how to be like Jesus. For example, she took care of Jesus. She taught Jesus how to speak. She carry Jesus in her arms so who else know uh, Jesus better than the Virgin Mary so she's the one who will help us to imitate or do like he did do like like Jesus will do 
So this is the purpose of this consecration. And St. Louis said that he gave more glory to God his Father during all those years of submission and dependence than he would have given by spending them working miracles, preaching far and wide, and converting all mankind. Otherwise, he would have done all these things. We can say, uh, for example, uh, Jesus preached, he started his mission of preaching, of announcing the kingdom of God of, uh, from his uh, 30 years, when he was 30 years old, and until he died, uh, he, had around, he was around 33. So we can say three years of mission, of preaching, of working miracles, and we say why he did not start it before, why he did not spend more years uh, in this mission. He was at home, he was hidden, of course he was with his mother, why he did not? And we say that because this was the glory, this, the glory of God the Father was on it, on being with his mother. <laughs> The father gave and still gives his son only through her. He raises children for himself only through her. He dispenses his graces to us only through her. God, the son, was prepared for mankind in general by her alone. Mary, in union with the Holy Spirit, still conceives him and brings him forth daily. It is through her alone that the son distributes his merits and virtues. The Holy Spirit formed Jesus only through her, and he forms the members of the mystical body and dispenses his gifts and his favors through her. So Jesus uh, could come into the world already preaching, the, announcing the kingdom of God, but he did not do because it was not the will of God the Father. It was the will of God the Father that he came in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He practice humility in doing that and that's why we shall be also humble putting putting ourselves uh, to the consecrating we also shall be humble consecrating ourselves giving ourselves to the care of the virgin mary and this devotion is an expression of great humility a virtue which god loves above all others god opposes opposes the proud but gives his grace to the humble so when we consecrate when we give ourselves to the virgin mary this is an act of humility it obtains many blessings from our lady this blessed virgin mother of gentleness and mercy never allows herself to be surpassed in love and generosity when she sees someone giving himself entirely to her in order to honor and serve her and depriving himself of what he prizes most in order to adorn her, she gives herself completely in a wondrous manner to him. So if I want to belong to her, if I want to take her uh, as my mother and to serve her and to love her and to pray to her, of course she will listen to that, she will accept all that I am doing for her and she gives herself to me. I belong to her and she belongs to me. And the other one, it leads to union with our Lord. This devotion is a smooth, short, perfect and sure way of attaining union with our Lord in which Christian perfection consists. This devotion is a smooth way is the path with Jesus Christ open and coming to us and in which there is no other obstruction to prevent us reaching Jesus. So this devotion will never be an obstacle for us to reach our Lord Jesus Christ. It will always help me. Mary will always help me to get closer to Jesus, as already I said. And we see that St. Louis for many times he repeat this that Mary will lead us to Jesus, will lead us to this ultimate end, Christ's ultimate end of this devotion. And the other one, this is a short way to discover Jesus, either because it is a road we do not wander from or because, as we have just said, we walk along this road with greater ease and joy and consequently with greater speed. Because, of course, the Virgin Mary will not let us to go away from this road. If she sees that 
she sees that I am going far from Jesus, I'm taking another road, she will say, hey, you go back. This is the way. This is the way. You look at Jesus. You do whatever he tells you. So this is the mission. This is the mission of the Virgin Mary. And this devotion is a perfect way to reach our Lord and be united to him. For Mary is the most perfect of and the most holy of all creatures. And Jesus, who came to us in a perfect manner, chose no other road for his great and wonderful journey. She had no sin. So that's why she's also the perfect way. God made her perfect. Why? Because she would be the way that would uh, bring Jesus to us. And she is the way that will lead me uh, to God. If Jesus came to us through her, we go to Jesus through her, like a bridge that connect us to God so do not worry uh, do not be afraid of giving yourself to the Virgin Mary it gives great liberty of spirit it gives great liberty of spirit the freedom of the children of God to those who faithfully practice it through this devotion we make ourselves slaves of Jesus by consecrating ourselves entirely to him so this is what we talk about in the other video. If I am a slave of God, I am totally free. This slavery will not make me a suffer, will not make me have a, a heavy life, but will, it will help me to be happy, to be free, to live this freedom of the children of God. I am called to be free. Of course, I am call, I'm called to serve the Lord. I am called to give myself to him, but I do it with love. I choose to be a slave of God because I want to be free. I want to be a slave because I want to be free. So this is what this consecration will help us. And as we say also that when, for example, we are going to consecrate ourselves, we'll do the renewal of your promises, the promises of your baptism. So this is an act that you renounce uh, Satan, you renounce his works, and of course, if we renounce Satan, I'm saying I don't want to be a slave of Satan. I don't want to be slave of Satan because I w I don't want to have the salary that he wants to give me. That is death. I want to be slave of God because what he has to me is eternal life. It's my freedom, my happiness, and the other one is it is of great benefit to our neighbor also as we said before uh, when i consecrate myself and i give everything that i have to the virgin mary and he he says for by it we show love for our neighbor in an outstanding way since we give him through mary's hands all that we prize most highly that is the satisfactory and prayer value of all our good works down to the least good thoughts and the least little sufferings. So as we said also before, um, it means that uh, all my prayers, the value of my sacrifices, the things that I offer to God, uh, it will be given to the Virgin Mary and she will use it for me, of course, and also for people that is most needing at that moment. I don't know the right person, I don't know the right moment. So when I pray and I give it to the Virgin Mary, she will, give, she will keep this value and she will offer for my neighbors, she will offer for myself. Nothing will be loose, nothing. It will be used in a, the best way that uh, it can be used. It is a wonderful means of perseverance. So. Uh, when we consecrate ourselves to Mary, she will help us. I cannot trust in myself because I'm prone to sin. I cannot trust in myself. I will trust, I will give everything to her because I know that I am weak. So if I want to persevere, I will call the Virgin Mary to help me, to help me to be more virtuous, to help me to do the will of God. So, of course, he's uh, giving us um, reasons why shall I cons consecrate myself to Jesus through her. And how I said a while ago, as I said a while ago, 
He is repeating all the time, oh, you consecrate, you need to consecrate. This devotion is so precious for you, so do not be afraid. So this is what he wants to tell us on these uh, points that I am saying to you, okay? And now we go to the next topic, the biblical figure of this perfect devotion, Rebecca and Jacob. So I'll read to you uh, the story. Isaac prayed to Yahweh for his wife because she could not have children. Yahweh heard Isaac's prayer and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. As the children struggled together within her, she said, If it's like this, why do I continue to live? She went to consult Yahweh and Yahweh said to her, Two nations are in your womb and two peoples will be born of you. One nation will be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And I will continue. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twins in her womb. The first to be born was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they called him Isa. Then his brother was born, and his hand had gripped Isa's heel, so he was named Jacob. So the elder one was Isa and the younger was Jacob. And the promise of God was that the elder shall serve the younger. And going now to the story. When Isaac was old and his eyes was so weak that he could no longer see, he called Isa, his older son, and said to him, My son, here am I. He answered. Isaac continued. You see, I am old and I do not know when I shall die. So take your weapons and your bow and arrow, go out into the country and hunt some game for me. Then prepare some of the savory food I like and bring it to me so that I may eat and give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Isa. When Isa went into the country to hunt some game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, I heard your father saying to your brother Isa, Bring me some game and prepare food for me that I may eat and bless you before Yahweh before I die. Now my son, listen to, listen and do what I command you. Go to the flock and bring me two fine kids so that I can prepare for your father the food that he likes. You, you will bring it to your father and he will eat it and give you his blessing before he dies. So we see here that uh, Rebecca is like deceiving uh, Isaac. But we need to remember the promise that God made to her. The, the elder shall serve the younger. And she's what she's trying to do to make the promise of God reach its fulfillment. Jacob said to Rebekah, My brother Isa is a hairy man and I am smooth skinned. Perhaps my father will feel me and I will, I will seem to be tricking him and so bring a curse on myself instead of a bless, blessing. But his mother said, Let the curse fall on me, my son. Only do what I tell you go and get the kids for me so we see here that we really remember uh, our mother mary this is what she does for us let the curse fall on me my son only do what i tell you go and get the kids for me this is what rebecca did so he went and got them we, we see here that jacob was obedient to his mother and she obeyed her even though she was not uh, what i'm doing uh, but she obeyed the mother and took them to his mother to prepare food that is that his father liked uh, rebecca knew she she cooked for for isaac and she knew what he liked most and it was what she prepared so she prepared the food and she asked uh, jacob to bring this food for isaac he went to his father and said, Father, yes, my son, who is it? And Jacob said to his father, It is Isa, your firstborn. I have done what you told me to do. Come sit up and eat my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac said, 
How quick you have been, my son. Jacob said, Yahweh, your God guided me. So I will just see. At the end of the story, uh, Isaac believed that that one that Jacob was Esau and gave him his blessing. Uh, sometime after this, uh, Isaac came also with uh, the game he had hunt and gave it to uh, Isaac, but of course, uh, Isaac already had given his blessing to Jacob. Then I will read, uh, when Isaac had finished blessing him and Jacob had just left Isaac's room, Isaac came in from hunting. He also prepared food and brought it to his father and said it to him, uh, that this is the food I brought. And Isaac said, who are you? I am your son, your firstborn, Isaac. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that I hunted that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it all before you came and I bless him and he will be blessed. So Jacob uh, really got that blessing that uh, Isaac had for his firstborn. He got the place of Isaac and he was the one who was blessed by God. Isaac gave a loud and bitter cry and said, Bless me too, Father. And Isaac said he had only one blessing and it was given to Jacob already. And it says that Isaac uh, still gave him uh, uh, a blessing to, to Isa, but it was a different blessing. It was not the great blessing, we can say. Uh, he says, Your dwelling place shall be far away from the richness of the earth, away from the dew of heaven above. You shall live by your sword, and you shall serve your brother. So this is what uh, Isa received from, from Isaac, his father. Now, Isa continued to hate his brother because of the blessing his father had given him, and he thought to himself, the time of mourning of, for my father is near. I shall then kill my brother Jacob. We see here that uh, um, Esau was not really prepared for this. He was not really the one prepared for this blessing. We see that he already planned to kill uh, his uh, brother. And Rebecca, as she knows well, his sons, his children, uh, Esau and Jacob, she also knew that Jacob was the, the one that could be faithful to the promise of God. That's why she made her way to make him to gain, to have, uh, to be uh, the, the instrument of this promise of God. And sometimes when we see this story, uh, we say that, oh, she, she did wrong and it was so bad. But she was attentive to the promise of God. This is what Our Lady does uh, for us. She loves us. She, and we see also that uh, in the story, Jacob was the one who really liked to be more at home, to be with his mother. Of course, she learned a lot with her. And Isa liked more to go out to hunt and to have his life out of the house. And of course, if Jacob was with the mother, she, she look he looks more like her. And the same is with us. We are uh, invited. God himself invites us to be together, to, to stay close to our mother, to learn with her. And this is what Jacob did and we are called to do the same. If we are with her, she will teach us, she will love us uh, most specially. She loves also, she loves also uh, Isa, of course, she loved both of them. But Jacob was the one who was open to receive this love of that mother, of Rebecca. And if I am open to the Virgin Mary, also I will see more clearly this love that she has to me. We need just to open our heart and to want to be with her. She will defend us as she defended Jacob and she was attentive to the promise of God. She will protect us as she protected Jacob. Also, for example, when uh, Isa planned to kill his brother, what she did, if we continue reading the story, she sent Jacob away. You go away because your brother wants to kill you. So she protected him and also she wants to protect us because Satan is the enemy of the Virgin Mary and she wants to kill us. She wants to, he wants to bring our soul to, to hell. 
and our Virgin Mary doesn't want it and she will fight for us, she will fight for you. Do not fall in sin, do not fall in mortal sin, do not get this way. You follow my son, you do whatever he asks you to do. So this is the mission of the Virgin Mary. As Rebecca did, she will did it more perfectly. And the other one, she intercedes for them. She is interceding for us. Of course, she was the one who prepared the food and offered the food to Isaac. She knew what Isaac li liked most. And she will prepare us. She will offer our heart to God. She will offer our intentions to God. And God will hear, of course, the prayer of our mother, of his mother. And this is really what we can learn from this story. It's so simple. If we meditate more, we will see more aspects of the life of Rebecca that is totally connected with our Virgin Mary. And she is this one, this mother who takes care, who loves, who wants us to do the will of God, to please God with our actions. And she will, as I said already, she will fight for us because she wants us in heaven. She wants me in heaven and she wants you in heaven. We just need to accept to welcome this mother in our house, in our lives, and to give ourselves to her, trusting her that she will be the perfect way for me to go to God. And I hope uh, this, this story will really help us to understand and to med meditate about this maternity of the Virgin Mary. She is my mother, she is your mother, and she will take care, she will love you, she will protect you, and she will lead you to God. So God bless you and see you.